short, taken short at the 15-yard line, and back out to the 18-yard line, where Arkansas, the 37-yard uh, line. And let's check in Tris, uh, with Tracy Wolfson. Vern, you just mentioned the weather. It's actually sunny out here. It had been raining and raining hard for the last three hours, but I was told no more rain for the day. As for the surface, it's holding up extremely well. That's because there's a vacuum underneath, pumped out all the water. It is still a little bit slick. Bobby Petrino told me before the game, protecting the football will be key. Mallet on first down. Out to the right side, the pass complete to Joe Adams, number three. Ryan Mallett, who began his career at the University of Michigan, transferred to Arkansas, sat out all of last year, and a huge game the other night against Georgia. 408 yards, five touchdowns, both the, the best in school history. And he got nine yards on the first down at second and one. Michael Smith, the running back. He goes left, has the first down plus a couple. Dante Hightower, Rolando McLean, Dominguez Cook, Oxner, Petrus, and Love. The offensive line, right, DJ Williams, 61 catches a year ago, Smith, Adams, and Greg Childs. First down, 10, Razorbacks. Mallet with time. Caught by his tight end, D.J. Williams. Orlando McLean with the tackle, and here's the defensive group. Washington, Cody, and Dederick up front. The linebackers led by McLean and Dederick, uh, and uh, Hightower, Eric Anders, and Corey Reamer. And in the secondary, Arenas, Mark Barron, Woodall, Kareem Jackson. Wingo is the running back. Toss, D.J. Williams can't quite get the block. Kareem Jackson is the first to make contact, and Arenas finished the job. Arenas does a nice job here, not getting knocked down. The offensive player tries to throw at his feet. He sheds him with his hands, stays alive. As you said, Vern Jackson strung him out, and Arenas makes the, uh, the, the play near the sideline. It's like we got a penalty here on this play. Uh, yep. And Nick Saban, second, third season as Alabama head coach. Tom Ritter is our uh, referee today. During the room, clipping 72 offense, the penalties declined, third down. Called on Grant Cook, the uh, wow. left tackle. That's a bit of a surprise, declining that 10-yard uh, penalty right there. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty surprised. He's going to give him third and seven instead of second and 20. That's a lot of confidence in your nickel package. Now they've spotted the ball. They moved the down oh, marker. I see, yeah. I see, I see. It's it all the way loss. back at the 46. Yeah. Good, good call by Nick. <laughs> yes. I, I, when I was looking at the down marker, I said, wow. You agree both ways? Yes. Yeah. Third and 11. Mallet hit. Pulls up and fires a wounded duck incomplete. Justin Woodall was the closest to it. He was there with Jarius Wright. And it was Marcel Darius, a sophomore, number 57 with the pressure. Well, this is the, the football game right here. Get it into third down situation. Only a three-man rush. And big guy Darius, number 57, who is becoming a force on this football team, just pushes his man right into the back and then deflects that ball. That is that third down pass rush nickel that Nick is so famous for. Here's the punt, and it rolls to a stop inside the eight-yard line. Forty-five yards on the punt. Alabama has the ball. Stopped right on cue, didn't it? It did. 
And here's McElroy in the Alabama offense. First and 10. Backs up under some pressure, fires it out. It's incomplete at the 15 yard line. Colin Peak couldn't hang on. And the starter replacing John Parker Wilson in his first year as a starter, the junior Greg McElroy. No interceptions in the last two games. Played in six games last year and will develop his story throughout the afternoon. That one incomplete. How about that? Starting the game out with a pass on their own eight yard line. Wouldn't expect that in 08. Marquise Mays, number four in motion. Here's the handoff. Ingram comes left and plunges out to the uh, 12 yard line. It's Carpenter, Johnson, Vlahos, Jones, and Davis. Julio Jones, Ingram in the backfield, Preston Dial, Colin Peak, the tight end, and Marquise Mays, number four, at wide out. Third down. Upchurch, who has been injured the last couple of weeks, is in the lineup on third down. Roy Upchurch, that's Peak, who starts in motion. Three man rush for the Razorbacks. McElroy dropped again. That's two for Colin Peak. My goodness. Well, you distribute the ball as a quarterback, and that's about all you can do. Safe throw, perfect throw, and coughed up by your sure-handed tight end right there, which would have been a first down. So both teams, first drive, nothing out of it. P.J. Fitzgerald on the punt, wearing number seven now. They put Lionel Washington, the defensive lineman who wears 97 on the uh, punting team, and Fitzgerald, who did wear 97, not allowed to, to do so with two 97's on the unit, so he has uh, accepted number seven. Terrell Norton is the deep man. He moves up for the short punt. It's taken to 45 and tackled immediately. Dre Kirkpatrick, number 21. Missed a couple of practices with a, a knee injury earlier, so Norton tackled quickly, but it's good field position for the Razorbacks. Well, Alabama three and out, two drop passes by the tight end, Colin Peak, a relatively short punt, and Arkansas at the 42 of the Crimson Tide. And in the exchange of the punts, Arkansas gains 10 yards, basically. So a very successful start for Arkansas's defense. Michael Smith, the only running back. Here's Mallett play, changing the play. He's huge, 6'7", 240 pounds. Play action, rolls out to his left, pulls up. Nobody there, and he finally throws it away. There was one receiver split way to the left side. Jarius Wright, but uh, had to heave it, heave it away. I think this was a busted play, or the back didn't get out. Somehow, only one receiver, usually on those bootlegs, you get a tight end crossing or a back sliding out into the flat. Remember, Ryan Mallett changed the play at the line of scrimmage. I don't think his team heard the boot the right way. Second and 10. Michael Smith. Whoa! Kareem Jackson, number three, down around the ankles. Yeah, it's Flags gonna, down. It's going to be clipping again or a crackback block again, but Jackson reads the play instantly and beats the block. Handoff looked good, but look at Jackson beat the block that time by Jarius Wright. And Jarius Wright is going to get called on the play. Watch him to the left side of the screen. He's going to get called on it every time. That, that is because what did Nick tell us when we were talking to him? We'll get this call here first. Block the ball away. Number four on the offense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Main second down. So he said... What do we go? What do you look for from defensive backs when you're recruiting them, Nick? And he's a defensive back specialist. He goes, first of all, they better be willing and able to tackle. Right. And then he goes, ball skills and speed all come into it, but they can't play for me if they don't tackle. And you just saw that right there from Jackson. That was an interesting uh, conversation. He talked about ball judgment. Yes. He said he used to recruit track and field stars right. for defensive backs. Now he goes more for baseball players. Mallet. In trouble with Mount Cody. Moving. <laughs> Look at Terrence Cody. <laughs> All 355 pounds of him. 
Oh, wow. Wow. Amazing. 30, 30 Amazing. and 25. Yeah. Now Cody gets a spot on the bench. Hand off. Big hole right side. Michael Smith to the 40-yard line. But that is going to be eight yards short of the first down. Marquise Johnson makes the tackle, number 24, gain that, of 18. That's what I was talking about in mitigating your damages. No matter how well you throw the ball or how explosive you are, when you get into one of those situations, you can't let the down and distance beat you. He calls the screen. He did not expect that much of a gain. But now that it's fourth and seven, he's going to go for it here. And just a quick update. There are a few seconds left in that uh, LSU-Mississippi State game. And now expecting the punt and not getting it, apparently, Alabama calls timeout. Well, they got more guys on to match up, and then they'll someone go off. Okay. Back at Brian Denny. Early first quarter, no score in the game, fourth down and eight. And now, having uh, had Alabama take a timeout, Bobby Petrino sends his punter out. This is Dylan Breeding, a walk-on from Hoover High School in Alabama over near Birmingham. A year ago, he was playing on a team that ultimately wound up winning the state championship. Breeding, number 14. Arenas waits for it at the 10-yard line. Oh, jeez. As uh, my old friend Pat Hayden would say, thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. I was... That was the best we're going to go for it. I was surprised they were going to go for it. I have to be, admit. Then he brings the punter in and he, they shake it off to the right. And, you know, that's the effect that Arenas can have on a punter. You try not to kick it to Arenas here, and all of a sudden you kick it out of bounds. That was a terrible play by Arkansas. That's a nine yard punt. Breeding uh, won the spot over a junior college transfer, Forrester, and we might see him. Breeding had a tough uh, outing. Last week against Georgia. There's Colin Peake in motion. Hand off Ingram. And uh, let's complete our uh, introduction of the lineups by focusing on the Arkansas defense. Beckett, Stadter, Shepard, he's the best of the bunch, and Davis up front. The linebackers, Franklin, Davis, and Burton, and in the secondary, Broadway Thomas Matt Harris, whose father Cliff, great star with the Dallas Cowboys, is here today watching in Rudell Krim. Second down and nine. And off left side. Ingram again. Sophomore out of Flint, Michigan. Well, one of the big question marks for Alabama going into the year was, yes, quarterback, but they replaced John Parker Wilson and could they replace the All-American tackle, Andre Smith. Carpenter's the guy that's going to do it right here. Watch big number 77 come out, step around, and then pin to the inside Jerry Franklin for a successful play. Third down four. And we'll go from the spread now, McElroy. It's Darius Hanks, number 15, who starts in motion, then goes back and sets up. Here's McElroy. Lobs it out nice. Roy Upchurch, number five. That will move the chain for the Crimson Tide out to the 44-yard line. All right, sir. That's good news. Uh, the shadows we see in Starkville yes, because that stuff is <laughs> moving through here. Great play last uh, down by McElroy to get that ball dumped off. First down, he pumps once, he goes deep for Marquise Mays. Mays can't hang on. Oh, he had a step. Ramon Broadway had fallen behind. Interesting in the win over Virginia Tech in Atlanta to open the season. McElroy hit Marquise Mays in a similar kind of pass, and it turned out to be a big play in the game. Here it is, a hitch and go to the outside. Remember the first play of the game, the hitch was jumped on by Arkansas. So you come back with a hitch and go, and it should have been obviously completed. That's a perfect ball and should have been just a baton into the end zone for a touchdown. Handoff up the middle to uh, the freshman Trent Richardson out of Pensacola, Florida. He runs into Wendell Davis, number 10. They use four defensive, four offensive backs. Does Alabama. Ingram's the starter of church. We'll see uh, Terry Grant, perhaps. And look at this. Three of the four passes have been 
dropped. Doesn't help to hold stats, does it? When you're one for four, three drops. I always thought there should be some rule about that as a quarterback. I it thought you might. Out, you know? I, I'm shocked. <laughs> Third and eight. McElroy across the middle. Flag. Yep. They got Jerry Franklin, number 34. It's well, intended for Darius Hanks. Jerry Franklin, uh, of course, uh, ejected from last week's game, which was such a big part of that Georgia football game. Pass interference, number 34. Offense, probably plays at the spot of the foul. First down. Now, this is a linebacker matched up against big speed for Alabama. As the receiver comes across, he loses his composure a little bit. Listen, it's third and eight. All you have to do is let the guy catch the ball and make the tackle, and you force Alabama to punt. Franklin panics. Alabama gets a first down out of it. Earl Alexander has joined the receiving core. He is tight or wide to the right. First down and 10. Blitz threatened. Not coming. And uh, nothing doing with Richardson, the ball carrier, and Shepard. Malcolm Shepard, number 96. You really like him. Oh, well, he, well, everybody really likes him. I mean, he was first team all SEC last year. He was uh, voted captain as a junior on this team. We've seen him for a while, Vern. I mean, he's played as a true freshman for Arkansas. And he, his intensity level, just he refuses to stay blocked. And he's one of the guys on that defensive line that could play for any team in the country. Loss of three. And now Ingram's back in as the running back. McElroy wings it out, Ingram. Didn't get much. That was a great read that time by Wendell Davis on the screen. Now again, McElroy has had success because he doesn't force the ball. He also gets coached well. I don't know if you know this, Nick doesn't like his quarterbacks to force the ball. I, I, <laughs> you know that rumor has made its way around so the country. So he has accepted what Nick told us is, the thing he likes about him is he plays with no ego. And that's tough to do, believe me, we all think we're a little better than we are, you know, as a quarterback. And he's accepted his limitations and runs the offense. McElroy has never been defeated as a starter. South Lake Carroll High School in Texas. Here's Marquise Mays, who uh, dances down the sidelines. He's knocked out of bounds at the 46. Not enough for the first down, but it'll be uh, a gain of eight yards. Yeah. Close enough uh, where Nick has to make a decision on this, but I, I assume he'll punt the football away and play to his strong defense. Yep, P.J. Fitzgerald is on. As we told you, wearing number seven. First punt of only 31 yards. And Jarrell Norton, number 27, is the deep man for the Razorbacks. He's at the 10-yard line. Fourth and five, scoreless first quarter. That LSU game is final now. LSU hangs on and defeats Mississippi State. Whistle. Pre-snap. Oh, there's a flag. Should be delay a game, I assume. Delay game. Off the five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Now Jarrell Norton doesn't move. He's still at the 10. And a five-yard penalty makes it fourth down and 10. Nice. Very high. It'll bounce into the end zone. Touchback. And Arkansas will get it at the 20-yard line. Six minutes and 15 seconds to go in the opening quarter of play. No score. Drifted west, so we've got overcast guys. 0-0. Zero, zero. And Ryan Mallett. And the Razorbacks open up at the 20-yard line. Four men down for... Oh, they got Mallett. Wow, Eric Anders. From a downline position. Anders, number 32, the senior out of San Antonio in his first year as a starter. 
I'll tell you, it goes right by Anthony Odom this time. Top of the screen to the right. That is, a, whoa, that's an Olay if you've ever seen one. Anders was a pass rush specialist last year in nickel, and this is a game made from heaven for him because Arkansas is almost all pass. Draw play, Smith hit from behind and dropped at the 11-yard line. Yeah, Mr. Rolando. This time it's Rolando. Rolando. Rolando introduces himself to us as Rolando. He goes to Vern, he says Rolando. To me, Rolando. He's like Tiger. Everybody knows who Rolando is. In fact, if you turn on the tape and you study tape, you know who Orlando is. Number 25 jumps out of every tape you watch of Alabama. Undisputed leader of this defensive unit. Describes himself as a shy guy, and he really is. Yes. But very impressive and quite serious in his conversation. Mallet under pressure. Knocked away. Darius with the pressure on Mallet. And Mark Barron, number four, was defending. It'll be fourth down, and Bobby Petrino's bunch will have to punt. The name of the game is to affect the quarterback. You don't have to sack him, but watch Alabama affect the quarterback. Mallet has to move his feet and move his feet. The accuracy goes way, way down for Ryan Mallet. Well, for any of us, but that's the name of the game. Sacks are nice, but moving them out of that two-foot pocket is a mandatory for this Alabama defense. Saw the graphic on Arena. Six career punt returns, breeding. This one's a little better. He backs Marinas up to the 40-yard line, across to the 50, and tackled and stopped at the 47. But good field position on the exchange, a 48-yard punt, 10 on the return, the tackle by Adrian Davis, number 18. Well, it's a game of attrition. It is. Field now, position it is, and it's moving Alabama's way. But I suspect now that a fellow by the number of number eight, Julio Jones, been injured nicked a little bit this year, is going to start to become a bigger factor in this football game. He's a mismatch on offense, just like those linebackers are on defense for Alabama. Knee bruise early for Julio Jones. First quarter of the Florida International win. Here's the handoff to Ingram coming left and finding uh, it difficult. And the touchdown against Virginia Tech, I felt everybody started to believe. Second down, here's the handoff to Ingram. Second and seven, and it'll be third and probably three when they spot the ball. Davis and Thomas with the tackle, and let's uh, watch Julio Jones. Number eight, top of the screen. He's not getting a lot of balls yet his way, but he might have to earn them in this run game by willing, be willing to block downfield. You know, in the national, excuse me, the SEC championship game, I was a bit critical of play calling when they went away from Julio Jones. He's such a weapon. I think you have to establish him on the field. Third and five, here's McElroy looking left. He goes deep. He's got a man, it's McCoy, and McCoy can't get up to the pass. Can't tell you yeah. how good Arkansas feels about themselves right now. I remember they got torched by Georgia last week. They come into this game, that was at home, and they're forcing tough throws. Now, a couple drop balls admitted here. You know, Alabama's kind of not making the plays themselves right now. But right now, Arkansas is stopping the run and forcing it into a bit of a passing game, which they believe is to their advantage. And on fourth down, we see P.J. Fitzgerald again, Jarrell Norton at the 10. Little pooch kick. And a fair catch taken. They'll let it drop, and this one is stopped and touched at the six-yard line. Brian Selman, who snapped the punt, is the first one down to stop it. From the six, first and ten. Now you can see only uh, two yards per play and 2.2 yards per play. Hand off to Smith going left. He shakes the first tackle. That's a nice gain out near the 15. Well, you know, Mike, Michael Smith might not be the uh, biggest of backs. Remember, he had to wait his turn after Felix Jones and McFadden were here. But, you know, he can carry the load. He had, last year, 35 attempts in two games against Auburn and Kentucky. So if you feed him the ball, he can hold up. And Bobby Petrino telling us 
on the phone on Wednesday, we must run the ball better than we have in the first two games. Yeah. Another illegal, flag. Illegal procedure that time. It's going to be against Greg Childs, number 85. Part of the snap. False start. 85. Offense. I've got a second down. Third penalty on Arkansas in the early going. The corner started to blitz from the outside, and uh, Childs uh, uh, felt it and flinched. Once he flinches, because he's on the line of scrimmage, that's a penalty. Second and seven. Mallet, good coverage. Childs goes up for the grab. And... <laughs> How about that one? He drops a snap, picks it up, and throws the ball all in one motion. <laughs> Look at that coverage that time. You can't teach it or work it any better than Kareem Jackson did that time. And, and just to go back to Saban's conversation with us yesterday, he talked about ball judgment. Yes. And, and it's not, you said that he recruits baseball players, but he says, I want people, maybe more specifically, that can judge ball flight like baseball players do. Okay. Mallet hit his first two, missed his last five. This one, whoa, is there a flag? There is not. Yes, there is. Very late coming in, and Arenas is going to get caught for jumping on the back of the intended receiver. It was Joe Adams, number three, the intended receiver. You can see it, Arenas uh, right there, all over the back of Joe Adams that time, and uh, not going to get away with that. That's a big play, because remember, number 28, defense, probably plays in the spot of the foul, first down. Arkansas is coming out, backed up, and they had second and two, and they did get the penalty, dropped the snap on the next one, and really should have got out of it right here, Alabama, but the penalty gives them a first down at the 22-yard line. Now a substitution in the backfield, Niall Davis, number seven. You see him to the left of Ryan Mallett, and Wingo is also back there. They hand it off, Niall Davis. You think that play wasn't? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Niall Davis is in. This play <laughs> might be designed for him. Virginia Tech has won 10 straight home games. That is what Alabama is attempting to accomplish this afternoon. They've won nine in a row. Here's Smith going left. Oh, boy. Stiffen up. Nice tackle by Rolando McLean and Justin Woodall. Woodall, number 27. I think Dante Hightower that time was taken down, and uh, he's still on the field. Got his legs chopped out from under him. I'm not sure exactly who did it, but let's look at Hightower here. Hightower is right there. Let's take a peek. Play goes out. It's a sweep. Oh, yeah, takes his legs. It's Petrus right there. My. Petrus out last year. Remember, he was a fullback back in the Houston Nut days a couple years ago, and Petrus gets a nice block on Hightower. Kirby Smart telling us yesterday that Hightower can play four different positions. Defensive. Got it. Dante Hightower assisted off the field and now taken to the training table. He'll work on that left knee. Courtney Upshaw has taken his spot. And Kirby Smart, the new defensive coordinator, talking about how invaluable the contributions are of Dante Hightower. Third down and five. Mallet back under pressure, has to get rid of it quickly. He does find Niall Davis, number seven, and uh, take another look at the injury. Well, let's highlight the two players involved in this. Petrus comes in and puts his helmet or shoulder pad right on the knee, the left knee for Hightower. And as he gets up, he's, he knows it's bad right away. And he's on the table. That brings up fourth down as they continue to tend to Hightower. Dylan Breeding, who has one punt of nine yards and uh, one of 48. He is on to punt on fourth down. Arenas, it's... A fake goes wow, left. They got the first wow. down. Wingo with the first down. How about that? Now backed up 
There's a guy right there that had a plan and he knew this one was going to work. But I'll tell you, you better be sure when you're backed up this much, run it inside and make the play. And it was not that sure of a play because Mark Barron could have made the tackle. My goodness. Well, a year ago, this Arkansas team scored eight touchdowns on fourth down plays. And the gamble pays off here. It's first down and 10. Mallet retreats. Oh, boy. On a line. Joe Adams, number three. That's another first down. Let's look at this play now. You know, Vern, the last one wasn't a fourth down touchdown, but it had not it worked, it would have been a touchdown probably for Alabama because of the field position. So it's just as good. But Ryan Mallett now, and you see what Petrino, as he starts to use his offense, he moved the pocket, and that allowed the big throw. That's the end of the first. No score. We'll return to Bryant Denny Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Back at Bryant Denny in the sad side of Dante Hightower being driven off the field. And for more on that, let's go down to Tracy. That's right, guys. You can tell it was bad just when he came over, lied there in frustration, threw his mouthpiece on the floor. The trainers had to calm him down. They then wrapped it up in ice. They're taking him to look at it further. Nick Saban came over just before and said, hang in there, buddy. Guys, any more information, I'll bring it to you. Well, Bert, you never know for sure, but I've seen that facial expression on a lot of teammates, and I've had it myself a few times. That, to me, looks like a guy who's realized he's got a serious injury. It's first down and 10 as we begin the second quarter. Here's the toss, fake toss. Mallet rolling out and drills it to a wide open. Jerry is right, number four. And so after the fake punt, the Arkansas Razorbacks moving the ball now. Let's talk a little bit about Ryan Mallet. Uh, Started at Michigan three games, transferred. Right. Uh, he's not shy. No, he isn't. Uh, you you got to get this. Um, Vern asked him a question on the phone, and he goes, well, you know, you burst onto the scene. Are, are you surprised the way you did it? And he goes, well, I didn't think I'd be bad. <laughs> and, and he's right. I mean, the guy knows he's got tools, and he's in an offense that takes advantage of those tools. Here's the handoff to Smith. Breaks one tackle. He gets inside the 30. Well, he started, Chad Henney got hurt at Michigan, and so the 6'7 freshman started against Notre Dame, Penn State, Minnesota, all there, and then decided when Rod, Rich Rodriguez came in to replace Lloyd Carr that that system was not uh, designed with him in mind. He right. sat out at Arkansas, and Bobby Petrino uh, took Houston Nuts place, and all the parts came together. Sure did. Second and seven, this is the 10th play of the drive, and it's scoreless game. Mallet retreats, hit. He's large, but he can't uh, get away from the effort. And it's Javier Arenas who got there. This was a bust by Ryan Mallet. It was a corner blitz, and he did not see it. That ball should have been thrown right away. He had his eyes the wrong way. Corner's coming in right there, see it? Arenas is coming in, he was fooled by it. That ball should have come out. That's one of the rules for Petrino, is you have to know what's coming from the secondary. Can't pick that up. You know, this is really interesting for her now as this game moves on. Petrino's about as good as there is in pass protections, and Nick Saban's about as good as there is at attacking pass protection. Arkansas yet to convert a third down. This is third and 15. Flag. Prior to the snap, delay game from the 15. Offense, five yard penalty, remain third down. And uh, while we have a moment, let's uh, spend it with Tracy Wolfson. Trace? Well, guys, after Ryan Mallett transferred, he entered the stadium in Arkansas for the first time. He called his dad and he said, Dad, I'm looking down on the greatest sight I've ever seen. I'm looking down on the football field. I'm back home. He grew up just 20 miles from the stadium. When he was a toddler, he told his parents he would be a star quarterback for the Hogs. Now, as he told us earlier this week, he's getting that chance, guys. Third and 20, Mallett fires it out. It's incomplete. 
Now, just to complete that thought, his dad is a football coach, and they they lived in Lincoln, about a half an hour from the stadium in Fayetteville. Highly recruited, they the family moved to Texarkana, and Ryan Mallett played at uh, Texas High School there. But there was this guy named Mitch Mustaine right. and Gus Malzahn and Houston Nutt, and there was turmoil at Arkansas when he was being recruited, and Ryan Mallett said, it was a circus. I didn't want to be one of the acts. Whoever made the decision, I think he's been smart both times. His original choice and his transfer. Here is the punt from uh, Dylan Breeding. Fair catch, Arenas. At the 15-yard line. Ryan Mallett. No score. It's not quite like Sleepless in Seattle. We're uh, scoreless in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> and time now for our Jack Links action cam. Well, if you want to play for Nick Saban in your corner, you must be able to play man-to-man -man press coverage. Now, Vern, if you see the technique right there by Jackson, good tell coaches, good coaches tell you what to do. Great coaches tell you how to do it. And Nick Saban shows you how to play the technique, not to panic at the last second and turn to make the play. First down and 10. It's getting a little darker. I thought and we were through with the, with well, the break. And, and the darkness of the Alabama run game so right. far is the story of the football game. They've now run the ball eight times, I believe, for what, 15, 16 yards 15 in this football? Yards. That ain't good enough. That was a part of the game that Alabama thought that they could control. And right now, Willie Robinson, defensive coordinator for Arkansas, says, okay, we've got a good start here. Second down. This is the pistol formation with McElroy five yards back. He hands it off. Oh, no, he doesn't. Flag before the snap. Prior to the snap, ball start, 79, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Right tackle, Drew Davis. Well, this is the fourth possession by Alabama, second time. They've started inside the 15. They have not moved the ball effectively at all. off right side Ingram oh he's got some room out to the 25 most effective run of the game for Mark Ingram the sophomore out of Flint Michigan Ramon Broadway makes the tackle well, this was a great block a pin block to the outside here Colin Peak number 84 gets the block the tight end blocking has always been a stable at least it was last year for Alabama when those two big tight ends used to just be it was like having four tackles in the game and right there, that pin block by Colin Peake really turned a second and long into a first down. First down and 10. McElroy, everybody defensively collapses toward the middle, and it's a modest game. Are on the field, Richardson just behind McElroy. Looks right the whole time, lobs it in on a nice pass. And Colin Peake who dropped two in the opening sequence of plays, makes the catch here for a 13-yard game. Well, I tell you, that time, McElroy identified who was covering the tight end. It was Anthony Leon right there. That's who's covering the tight end. He saw he had leverage. He was going to go to the outside all the way on this play. Look at all the green grass he can lead him to. That's a safe throw to the outside of the field. He knew he had it from the snap. And a first down and 10. McElroy with a play fake, lobs it out for Peak again. He tries to get by Jerry Franklin, and Franklin got some supplemental help. Su such a different look here. I mean, it's hard to even put into words. I mean, John, John Parker Wilson was a senior quarterback that had been through all the wars, but I got the feeling that they trust McElroy more with throwing the ball already three or four games into the season than they did with John Parker. It looks also like they're not able to power a run quite as easily, so they have to throw the ball. That's a pickup of uh, five. It's second down and five. Michael Williams in as a second tight end. Two wide receivers split to the left. Hand off Richardson. 
Caught behind the line, breaks a tackle, breaks another, and scoots down the sidelines. Touchdown, Alabama, 52 yards. There is a flag at the 16. Tremaine Thomas misses the tackle here. I think the flag is going to be against Julio Jones was involved in the play, but I think it was against Arkansas, yes. Trent Richardson, a true freshman right there, and the tackle is missed right here. Watch this. Comes in the backfield and misses it, and that what causes all the problems. Oh, there's three or four misses on the play. Jerry Franklin runs right through a tackle. That one is unconscionable. A linebacker missing a clean shot, and Richardson never even saw him coming. It's on Greg Gatson, number 28. Two big, huge missed tackles for Arkansas. <laughs> Trent Richardson from Mark Ingram. I did it last year. You're the man this year. <laughs> Richardson, 52-yard touchdown. Scamper, it's his fourth TD of this, his first season. And it puts Alabama on the board. He may have broken three or four tackles en route. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC continues after this message. And a word from your local station. LSU did win. They held off Mississippi State this afternoon. Richardson, a 52-yard run. Look at that, 86-yard drive. They had only 35 prior to gaining possession yeah. of the ball. Down. And they did it on the ground, too. That was the part that Arkansas was controlling till that time. After the uh, face mask, here's the kick from the 45. And this one taken two yards in. Let's go back and count the missed tackles. On well, the let's not put it all on Tremaine Thomas. Let's say there were a few guys. Richardson gets the ball number three. Let's try to do this here. Here comes one right there. Okay, we let that go a little bit more. Goes over there. Here comes number two right there. Okay, goes a little bit more. Number three right there. Okay, go a little four right there. Now he goes down to the sideline, eh, kind of an arm, just four missed tackles on the play. And Richardson, the prize recruit of the recruiting class this year, and the reason he's playing is Nick knows he could turn pro after three years. Play fake Mallet goes deep down the middle. Oh, my goodness. He's got a gun. I was amused, though, when D.J. Williams, the tight end, said, they put the jugs gun on his passes in time to 115 miles. I don't think so. I don't believe it. Well, it's hard enough, but this one was not thrown deep enough. Actually, Ryan Mallett should have put a little more air on this and let it go. That one ran out of gas on him. Second and 10. Five of 12 today after that career game last Saturday night. Draw play. Michael Smith. It'll be third down and six. Terrence, Mount, Cody. Well, with Hightower not in the game, Cody makes that play right there. He's going to have to probably third down. I want to see if he stays on. it. He's begging Nick Saban to stay in on third down. Well, he's got to lose, what, seven more pounds? Yes. Oh, number, he's coming off. Uh, number 13, Corey Reamer, is the guy that's going to replace Hightower in this defense. Cody now weighs in at 355. Saban said if you get down to 348, you get to stay on the field on third down. Not there yet. Third down. Roderick Green is the running back. This one left side, and it's caught by Childs for a first down. And a flag is thrown at the 34-yard line, 44-yard line. See what we got in the way of an infraction at the end of the play here. And it uh, looks like uh, Childs might be injured.
Charles lost his helmet. It may have been uh, taken off. Oh, yeah, Grayson. You can see it. Wade Grayson, number 71, right at the end of the play. Now, if that was during the play. So it wasn't a disaster. The play was big enough to get a first down on the third down play. But Wade Grayson, the backup center and a 12 game starter last year at guard, comes up with another bonehead play for Arkansas. Now it's a 20 yard gain, but then the loss of 10. And so a first down for Arkansas at the 34 yard line. Look at the job that this Alabama defense has done so far against Arkansas in the first two games. Arkansas scored 21 points in each of the two games in the first quarter. Scoreless thus far. Midway through the second. Play fake Malik with time. Right side. Caught dropped. Whoa. Jarius Wright, number four. I actually got two. two. Uh -huh. Third one and Malik under pressure. Caught and drop. Javier Arenas. I'll tell you, you got to give the play call and the defensive play calling so far to Kirby Smart, the new defensive coordinator for Alabama. He's like he's in the backfield. Again, he plays the corner blitz right into the bootleg. You can't have a better call into a bootleg than the corner blitz or slot blitz, whatever you want to say, right into a naked boot. Perfect call into this Arkansas offense. Third sack by the Alabama defense, and it's third and 23. Mallet with a lot of time, and he uncorks this one near side too high, intended for Greg Childs. Fourth down. Well, now it's very dangerous because now Arenas has that football right in that 40 to 50 yard line where he, you know, he makes one guy miss, and it's a change of scoreboard time. Now, coming into the game this year, a 20.5 yard per return average. His career is 14 yards plus. Dylan Breeding. Nice one. Backs Arenas up to the 31 yard line. But now, watch out. To the 50. Jerry Franklin with the tackle. That's a 47 yard punt. And Javier Arenas with an 18 yard return. Crimson Tide leads 7 0. She now practices orthopedic surgery in Illinois and Indiana. You never know. Never know, but <laughs> good bloodlines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, when is Julio Jones going to get the ball again? Just too good of a player. Here's the reverse. Oh, watch this one. He's got Julio Jones open. And he's going to score. How do you do? Nice yep. call. Well, it just makes sense. You got to. You got to feed the ego of everybody. You know, whether we're announcers, we got to have it fed once in a while, or a big time receiver. That was a situation where Julio Jones this needs to be a weapon on this team. Lee Tiffin will attempt the extra point. PJ Fitzgerald will hold. That's what you talk about, Vern. That's why it was so dangerous. The punt returned by Arenas. It put it in a position on the field where Alabama could put the bag of tricks. They start out in the Wildcat, then they got the big guy right there. Look at that field down there. That looks good, doesn't it? Now watch how they get it to it. They go Wildcat, they run the reverse. Julio Jones gets him to sleep, and all of a sudden, that's about as easy as you can do it. You know, Jermaine Thomas right now is saying, why is it always me? I get Trent Richardson on one and Julio Jones on the next one, and I can't tackle either one of them. 50 yards, 10 seconds. 
And all of a sudden, it's 14 to nothing. Julio Jones, a 50-yard catch from Greg McElroy, Crimson Tide, by two TDs. Well, the Arkansas defense wildly criticized last week when they gave up so many big plays in the loss to Georgia, that 52-41 shootout. And they've been blitzed by two of 50 in this quarter. Here's the kickoff. That one into the end zone. Touchback. All right, Vern. Um, this is a critical spot in the game now for Arkansas. If they want to make this a football game, there's six and almost seven minutes left in this football first half of this football game. Alabama gets the ball to start the second half. They can't allow Alabama to have an ending drive to end the first half and then get the first drive of the second half. They could be down 28 to nothing at the a blink of an eye. It's critical that Arkansas strings together some first downs here and get out of this half. See, we've already had five punts by the Hogs. Here's a play fake. Mallet left side. Drops oh, Childs. Wow. I tell you, Arkansas is just nervous or something. I, this, this is very surprising. You know, they you go to watch a practice. I was there Wednesday. They'll pitch that ball around that field for two hours and not drop one or two passes. This has to be the third or fourth pass that has been dropped, the third or fourth pass that has been thrown wildly. He's been sacked two or three times, forced out of the pocket. They are really out of sync. D.J. Williams, the tight end, sets up right side on second and ten. And a play change from Mallet. Five seconds on the play clock. The handoff, nothing doing. Marcel Darius forces the runner, Michael Smith, outside. And it will be third down at Arkansas among the other problems in the first half is only one of seven on third downs. Well, and now, you know, what do you do here? I mean, you, you're going to come and face the teeth of this Alabama defense again. And I, I tell you, every guy, you know how receivers think they can beat their guys in the secondary? Every defensive lineman for Alabama thinks they can beat the offensive lineman for Arkansas. It's third and nine. Better get it out of your hand quick, Ryan Mallett. Three man, four man rush. Mallet. Oh, he had a man open. And Justin Woodall is there to knock it away from Jerry is right. Fourth down. Good protection. Only a three man rush, but I think it was uh, Robbie Green, the nickelback that came across. It was. And I made the play. Yep. Yeah. Well, they've got a ton of them back there. They had six. Huh. And here we go. Same thing on two. Arenas is back there again. Dylan Breeding, number 14, sixth punt. It's returnable. From the 30. Breeding can't get him. Arena still on his feet. First and goal of the six. Flags down, though, this time. Yes. Back in the vicinity of the Alabama 40-yard line. The illegal block. I think it was Corey Reamer, number 13, that got the block in the back that time. Or shove in the back. That will negate a 64-yard return. During the return, illegal block in the back, and the 13 of the receiving team, 10 yards from the out. Yeah, he, he shoved Wendell Davis in the back that time. It was a pretty easy call. And you got a weapon like Arenas, you got to avoid that at all costs. Here he is right here. Watch the push. For as Arenas goes by, official right here is going to make the call. Watch this. He's got his eye on it, makes the call. You got to get that helmet across. It's a cutback by Arenas, and then you see the push by Reamer. Easy call. And instead of a first down goal at the six, it's a first down at the Alabama 32-yard line. Mark Ingram is the running back. Yeah. 
Hand off Ingram coming right. Second down and <laughs> nine. How much do you think it grinds Alabama that both Heisman's came out of Auburn? Right. Ingram. Mark Ingram grew up in uh, in uh, Florida as well as Flint, Michigan. His dad, of course, Mark, played at Michigan State, and he decided at the last minute to come to the University of Alabama. Yeah, his dad played for Nick at Michigan State, or there's connections there. They recruited him. You know, he just said, I watched it, and I felt I wanted to play against the best. And he said he felt comfortable the minute he walked on campus that this was the place for him. That's how it usually works. You never know. Father uh, incarcerated at the current moment. Third down. Here's McElroy. Oh, that, uh, oh, that should have been picked. Wow. Andrew Stewart, number 36. Yeah, yeah you see, Arkansas, you know, as a coach, you get something you can only do so much. You get him in the right formations. You get, you draw up the protections, you draw up the, the different coverages. You got to make a play right there. That's a play that can change the game. This is a catchable interception drop. Another drop by Arkansas. P.J. Fitzgerald. Fair catch. Norton at the 14-yard line. 47-yard punt. Nothing on the return. And Ryan Mallett had that big, big game last week against Georgia after transferring from uh, the University of Michigan sitting out a year ago. He was able to practice on Sunday nights, and Bobby Petrino said he took almost 400 snaps yeah. in Sunday night practices. Here's Michael Smith going right. Nothing, Nothing. there. Nothing. Wow. Justin Woodall. And let's uh, get the duck back on. The answer to the Aflac trivia question. Did you know the first one? Arnold Tucker? No. Nope. Didn't know that one. He was honored at the College Football Hall of Fame uh, last I, year. I was there. Yeah, I remember. I remember, remember. I remember Jerry Rome, but I didn't remember that he transferred. How about Troy Aikman? Transferred from Oklahoma to UCLA. That's probably the most famous of all time, right? Yeah. Second and nine. Another nice defensive play in the middle by Eric Andrews and by Mark Barron, number four. And Mark Barron is the guy that has really taken Rashad Johnson's spot. Now, Justin Woodall is taking the calls that Johnson made, but Barron is the guy that's broke into the lineup as the extra safety. And another third down for Arkansas. They're one of eight so far. Three ten to go, first half. Bobby Petrino took that time out. He knew how important it was. He didn't want to give the floor to the ball time back. Out. They need this first Arkansas. down. That is their first charge time. The time called with Arkansas trailing 14 nothing in Tuscaloosa. I think I said uh, <clears throat> they don't want to give the ball back to Florida. That's never a good idea, but it's Alabama. They don't want to give the ball back. <laughs> Florida playing at Kentucky tonight. Reportedly, Tim Tebow, Major Wright, and Joe Hayden took a private plane up to Lexington because of concerns about the pro. Oh. Deflected and caught. That's a first down. Joe Adams, number three. I think it was Rolando McClain that got his hand on this pass. Six foot seven, throwing the shallow cross. It was McLean. It is helmet. It is helmet and what skips forward for a big, big first down. Out to the 28 yard line, first down and 10 with 2.35 to go. Now it back across the middle, incomplete. The umpire, and the umpire got in the yep, way. Made yep. the play on that one. Yeah. Well, apologies will be forthcoming, I'm assuming. Well, part of the shallow crossing attack that Petrino has designed is to run off the umpire as a picker. But right now he picked Michael Smith and almost picked off the pass. 
Boy, does the, uh, does the Alabama defense have the Arkansas offense out of sync? I mean, it is just obvious to watch up here. Second down and 10. Kobe Hamilton is on at wide receiver wide right. And that one might have been tipped by Eric Andrews. I'm not sure if he deflected it or it was just thrown incomplete to D.J. Williams. This time he ran right into the blitzing safety Mark Barron, and that threw off the play. I mean, they just can't get anything right. The receiver is trying to go out for a pass. He runs into number four and really messed up all the timing on the play. Third and ten. Flag thrown on the far side, top of the screen. Dead ball, false start, 85, offense, five yard penalty, remains third down. Same exact play that happened earlier in the game. Childs flinched. Remember, he's on the line of scrimmage, and they're going to call it. That is the seventh penalty against Arkansas. Third and 15, their average need, Gary, on nine previous third downs, 14.7 yards. So they've uh, really been in jail. Nope. Down the right side, it is incomplete. Wow. Marquise Johnson and Robbie Green, number 24 and 23. I think he would have had this ball had Green not dislodged it. The ball was slightly underthrown. Yes, he would have had that catch. Johnson's in coverage, but Green cleans it off. Beautiful play. He did it with his shoulder pad, too, not his helmet. Robbie Green, number 23. And that uh, makes Mallett 7 of 21 throwing the ball here in the first half. He's greeting Arenas. At the 35, tries to find the wall and looked for a moment like he would. Now flag, two flags are down. That's a 15-yard punt return for Javier Arenas. Jerry Franklin made the stop. Now, if I'm Arkansas, I know you don't like 14-0, but I, I, I wouldn't be really upset to get out of this half 14-0. It could have been horrible. Game could be over, basically. During the return, there were two blocks in the back. Block in the back on number 28. That penalty is declined. Block in the back, number 13. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Yep. If that was a block in the back by 28, we got a scoop. That's why the fans <laughs> booed, but yeah. it was Reamer again. Reamer did get the block in the back again. Here's 28, Javier Arenas, who is returning the ball. And in the background right there, you see Reamer get the block. Well, there'll be uh, room for coaching at halftime. Nick Saban, as Reamer now has uh, wiped out a 64-yard punt return and a 15-yard punt return. Arkansas badly needs to get in and regroup. They need to settle down. McElroy out of the backfield. Richardson, who has a 52-yard touchdown run, makes the grab and tackled by Tenarius Wright, number 43. I think it was Julio Jones that stayed in this play, and then you get the big Davis coming out the block on the play. Drew Davis, number 79, and cleans it up and makes a positive play out of it. Darius Hanks and Julio Jones break the huddle, go wide to the left. Marquise Mays, number four, is wide right. Arkansas with four men down. They rush only four. The handoff to Richardson. Fumble? No, no he got a helmet. Back. Helmet. helmet. It, yeah. <laughs> Elton Ford, number nine, with the tackle. Wendell Davis is the man who. Well, Flejos, the center this time, pulls along with Barry Jones, the guard, and uh, that's the old truck and trailer right there. Stay with your guys. 1.43 to go. Here's McElroy back. Watch out from behind. 
And it's incomplete for Jones down the left sideline. Adrian Davis, number 18, had pressure from the backside on that. It's just interesting to stand here and observe. It's like Arkansas has got like a standing eight count here. You know, they want to get out of this thing. They're they're looking at the clock and go, just get me to halftime, you know, and because they just are not making plays. They look out of sync. They don't know where to line up. They're missing tackles. It could be really ugly. It sounds dire. Yes, I think it is. Second down and 10. McElroy back, corner blitz. He's got a man open near side and Mike McCoy, I think, conscious of the sideline and trying yeah. to get his foot down. I think that's exactly what happened there. Not a very good throw for McElroy that time. Had an easy one-on-one -on -one pitch and catch. He felt the sideline and just didn't stretch out and get it. Third and 10 with uh, 92 seconds to go before the break. Screen pass, left side, Roy Upchurch, number five. I don't know that that's enough for a first down. Looks like they'll be marked just short. Matt Harris, number 39. I would assume right now Nick Saban takes a timeout and thinks this over. He wants to go for it. Yep. Fourth and a few inches. So Preston Dial, Baron Huber come on. This is the ultimate power formation now for Alabama. Well, they have to shift. They're in an illegal spot. There they go. There's the shift. Huber. Oh, they single. moved. Left tackle flinched. Ah. That's why I'm surprised they didn't go with a timeout right there. It would have helped them with the clock, settled everybody down. You know, everybody was moving too fast there. Dead bad. False start. 77. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. James Carpenter. And watch it right here. You see a little flinch. Watch the little head bob. There it is. That's all you do. Good call. And so P.J. Fitzgerald comes on. Arkansas survives. You can uh, read lips and. Yes. Well, that was. This is huge, huge last seven minutes for the Razorbacks. Fitzgerald sends it deep. It might be too deep. It is into the end zone touchback and 15 seconds ago. I just to go back, Gary, to the point you made at the beginning of the telecast. Big plays, offense, defense. And so far, Arkansas oh, has not made any big not, plays offense. They're not making the little plays. Well, First down seven, punt seven, penalty seven. That was supposed to be lucky. This is Dennis Johnson, number 33. Yeah, I, I don't really understand this. this. This half is over. Why even run the ball? Take a knee. You can't have a mistake. Two big plays offensively for Alabama. 52-yard touchdown run Richardson. Little gadget play, Julio Jones at the end of a 50-yard pass. That's the 14 points they have put on the board. And Arkansas has not moved the ball at all. Let's go down to Tracy with Bobby Petrino. Coach sacks, missed passes, mental mistakes. It just seems like Ryan Mallett and this offense out of sync. What's been the problem? Yeah, we're just hurting ourselves. We've had a lot of drop passes. we got Ryan not setting his feet and doing things right. When you play a good defense, sometimes you get out of your element. We need to calm down run the ball, run our routes perfect, and catch the ball. It's his first road game here in the SEC. Do you think he's at all intimidated? No, I don't think he's intimidated. He's a great competitor. Defensively, we're doing a good job. We're keeping us in the game. How important was that last stop? Big. It was real important. Gives us a chance to come out and get right back in it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, Tracy, thank you. Sounds like he's been channeling Gary Danielson. <laughs> That's the end of the first half with a score of 14-0. Let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. And Alabama will get the ball. This is Arenas and Terry Grant, number 29. Grant has it. Hit as he spins, and he's down 
at the 21 yard line. Well, we talked uh, at the beginning of the day. Alabama's defense, Arkansas's offense. Right. right. Well, we should have put nerves in there too okay, somehow good. because Arkansas really was nervous in that first half. Now their defense did a decent job. Uh, 29 plays were run by Alabama. 27 went for 99 yards. Two went for 102 yards. So, for the most part, they hung in there. But offensively, can't catch the ball. They're jumping off sides. It's just been a little bit of comedy of errors. Well, first road game in the conference this year for the University of Arkansas. And the handoff goes to Mark Ingram. Not much there. So the trends are never good. 14 nothing now. I will say that Arkansas is still in this football game. When you have Ryan Mallett with 74 yards passing in the first half, you know you're in trouble. Remember, 102 three yards, but 50 of it was one place. So they've done a decent job. But that's 7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. That, that Arkansas offense has been stymied. McElroy getting pressure from behind and is caught and sacked. That was Adrian Davis, number 18, with the sack. First sack of the ball game. Well, isn't this interesting? You get a little pressure up front, four-man rush. Nobody open inside. Looks like decent pass protection, but you can't hold it that long because sooner or later, this time Adrian Davis makes the play, you're going to have to give up a sack. Third and 11. Ingram, the running back. Three-man rush by the Razorbacks. McElroy steps up, finds Ingram. He's in jail. It'll be fourth down. So three and out for the Crimson Tide to open the third quarter. Tackle made by Jericho Nelson and Rudell Krim. All right, let, let's see now if Petrino went in there and told him what he had to tell him. Come on, it's a football game. You've been playing football since you've been eight years old. Ryan Mallon, set your feet. Offensive lineman, take somebody on. Receivers, catch the ball. Let's give it a chance here. P.J. Fitzgerald. Matt Harris with the pressure for the Razorbacks. And whoa, Norton. There's a flag on the play, and I believe this is going to go against Alabama. Looks like Dre Kirkpatrick made contact about the time the catch was made. Pretty good catch by Norton. They might have tried him at wide receiver. <laughs> he got hit right as he caught this ball. Watch this catch by Norton. Gets hit, bobbles it, and grabs it. Nice play. Because he, you know, he didn't know a flag was going to come out. That was a good play. Yep. Tom Ritter. Kick catch interference. Number 21 on the kicking team. 15 minutes in the spot of the foul. First down. You know, oftentimes, Vern, when a guy gets hurt, his buddy, Dante Hightower, gets hurt. The other guy, Rolando McClain, starts feeling bad and gets into a funk. We have to watch and see how he handles the injury to his linebacker mate. On first down and 10, here's the handoff left side. It's Wingo. Ronnie Wingo from St. Louis bobbles it, but then keeps it. How about Ryan Mallett with some pressure? Today? Yeah, it, it was uh, just enough, you know, enough pass rush to throw his feet. It started early, got his feet moving, and he was never able to find good, strong drops the rest of the half. And uh, three sacks, seven hurries, four. Knocked down. He had a lot of drops. Here's Mallet. Out of the wing to the right. That's Joe Adams, number three. Hey, first down. There you go. You got to do it. You start where you start. Start with small things and then build on it. Listen, as good as this Alabama defense is, as well as they've been caught, there's not a defensive alive that doesn't going to give up plays. We talked about it in the open. You got to mitigate the big plays. Alabama's done that. Tennessee has not made the little plays in this football. Excuse me. Arkansas has not made the little plays in this game. On first down, out of the spread. Mallet play fake, pulls back. Fires it short, and it's caught by D.J. Williams, his tight end. And a big gain for Arkansas to the 20-yard line. Williams, a junior from Little Rock, that's a gain of 23. Well, he was a Mackey Award winner. This was a, a tight end delay. 
do what you gotta do. He lines up and delays and it comes across. He's right over here. Watch him delay on the play and then run to the open space over here. Blocks down, delay, delay, delay. That was the only guy that had a chance of catching the ball. That was a design play just to him. First down and 10. This is Wingo again, number 20. Tackle made by Eric Anders, number 32. Well, Arkansas got the big play just a moment ago from D.J. Williams, but look at the, the comparison. A week ago against Georgia, 485 total yards. They 136, 41 points last week. They're still trying to dent the scoreboard here. Our good friend Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator at Georgia, is going, please don't put that up anymore. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> there might be some Georgia fans watching this game. Second and eight. Mallet goes in the corner. He's got a man open. Up in the air. Caught. Touchdown. Greg Childs, number 85. And he beat a pretty good player that time. Kareem Jackson on the play. Player down at the 20. It's DeMarcus Love, number 65. Well, let's take a look at the fade pass to the outside to start this play. It's press coverage, but it's press bail. Look at Jack. He, he really is caught between no man's land there. Looking at the quarterback, he never saw his guy. He never had his eyes on his man. Very, very poor technique. Cost him a touchdown on that play. Now, DeMarcus Love was the right tackle on the play, and he just got blown into almost like Hightower's injury. Okay, the medical staff out uh, attempting to care for DeMarcus Love. Arkansas on the board. Time has been called. Back in Fayetteville, and the good news for the Razorbacks, DeMarcus Love able to walk off unaided. So he is getting some attention over on the sideline, but uh, doesn't appear as serious as that uh, injury suffered by Dante Stallworth. Right. And he got uh, kind of swiped from behind by his own teammate, Ben Cleveland, I think, is the guy that uh, kind of got him blocking uh, another player on the play. Alex Tejada for the extra point. Up and good. Works a lot better when you pitch and catch the ball, doesn't it, all these offenses? It's an amazing concept. Yeah, it is. You know, I think Alabama, you know how they change their coverages. We talked about this with motion. The motion across change the coverage right here. Here comes one player up. Watch Barron come there. You get two guys changing, and this confuses Jackson on the play. Justin Woodall comes up. Jackson thinks he's got help, realizes he doesn't at the last second. And you know, when we talked to Kirby Smart, we said to us, what worries me is we're so multiple that when we make a mistake, they're usually big mistakes. And this was a big mistake for Alabama. Cuts the margin in half. Greg Charles with the catch. Five plays, 55 yards, two big plays. You have the D.J. Williams catch for 23, and then the touchdown grab by Greg Childs. 14-7, and Ryan Mallett, who entered the third quarter, 7 of 21, perfect on that drive. Cameron Bryan will kick off now. The uh, Razorbacks have had trouble with their two kickoff guys. Tejada and Bryan, they uh, have a tendency to hook them out of bounds. It's well, not a good thing. I mean, the story of this game to me is Alabama has kept Arkansas in the game. Brian, this one short. Terry Grant. Nailed at the 19. So Greg McElroy back on the field. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, let's go outside the huddle. The first word coaches and players used to describe McElroy is smart. He earned his degree in three years, never received less than a B, and has a GPA of 385. He wears a number 12, the same number as former Alabama quarterbacks Kenny Stabler, Brody Croyle, and of course, Joe Namath. Namath was McElroy's dad's favorite player, and he told his son, if you go to Alabama, you have to wear number 12. And in high school, McElroy learned patience. He sat behind former Missouri star Chase Daniel and only started his senior year. He made the most of it, though, set a Texas 5A record of 56 touchdown passes. And, guys, he has never lost a game starting 19-0. On first down, on cue, Marquise Mays in a foot race. 
80 yards. McElroy to Mays. And go. Remember the first play of the first half was a hitch to the outside that didn't work. This time it's a hitch and go to the outside and goes for a touchdown. Perfectly thrown. Yes, perfectly thrown. Perfect route also. Here's Tiffin. Marquise Mays, 80 yards. There it is, Mays to the outside. Rudell Krim is in coverage, takes one step up and can't handle the speed, never. Oh, the ball is placed perfectly to the outside. Krim turns around and looks for the ball. At the instant he turns, the ball goes behind his helmet into Mays. You know what? That is sometimes, that just happens if you're a D Mays. If that ball would have been thrown perfectly, it might have been Knocked down, it was a step and a half behind. Ends up being a touchdown for Alabama. McElroy to Mays. 80 yards, second one play drive for Alabama today. Well, if you like your big offense, well, 80 yards, 52 and 50. Right, three plays, that's how this, now the coach will say, you know, besides the three grand slams, we pitch well. <laughs> you know? I mean, they all count. Here is the kick. He catch the ball. Dennis Johnson, number 90. Yep, look number what happened. You yep. got to catch that ball in the air. It bounced. And as a result. I mean, that ball, went, that ball went 50 yards in the air and you can't catch it? I mean, that's what Nick Saban said about ball judgment. Did you see the ball? You got to run up and catch it. So the Razorbacks have a first down now at the 17-yard line. Ryan Mellett. Play fake. Got a man open. It's Adams all the way out to the 42-yard line. You know, you could just see the, the, the different feel for Arkansas. Catch a couple passes. Yeah, of course, you know, you're going to get, you know, they hit balls on you. But as an offensive team, you say, okay, there's open space in here. Just give this guy time to throw the ball back here. And this time, a little play-action pass. Look at the space to throw to. That's as good as you can get it. That's a game of 25 and a first down. 21-7. Early moment, second half. Not this time. Corey Reamer, number 13, makes the tackle on Dennis Johnson, number 33. And, and that's something that the Alabama teammates and defenders replacing Hightower is going to say, good job. Now, we got our backup guy in there, make a play like that, just like Hightower made. Loss of four, second and 14. Mallet fires it, caught across the 50, and uh, the tackle made at the 49-yard line. Greg Childs, that's a gain of 13. You know, as good as Nick is as teaching technique to the defensive backs, when I was out at practice Wednesday in Fayetteville for Arkansas, that's how good Arkansas and Petrino is at teaching pass routes for his players. The trick to this, really, it's not a trick to this Arkansas pass offense is not formations and scheme, it's technique. And the Arkansas receivers are usually very sharp. Third and one. Timeout. Timeout. Arkansas, that is their first. Back in uh, Tuscaloosa, and let's take a look with our Jack Lynx action cam at the Marquise Mays touchdown cam. Look at the little subtleties here right now. As this ball's turning around, the defender turns. Here's Petrino yelling ball on the play. Ball, ball, ball. 
Krim turns, but the pass was maybe a yard short, and it turned out to be the best thing that could happen. Petrino and all the guys on the Arkansas sideline were all yelling, ball, 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 to help out Krim. It turned out when he turned around, the ball was a half yard short, ends up being a touchdown. Third and one, Razorbacks. They are two of 10 on third downs. This the shortest need they've had. Play fake, yes, they're gonna take a shot. And he's oh. got a man, DJ Williams. Oh. Broken up. Eric Anders, number 32. Great play by Anders that time. Playing his position. He's on the end of the line, he drops in coverage, and then Mallet lobs it. The one ball all day he didn't fire cost him that time. If he'd have thrown a bullet, Anders would have never been able to make the play. That's real simple, I know, to say up here, but that's the one. In film study, he's going, why didn't I just fire it at him? Here's a rugby kick, and it's blocked by Lionel Washington, number 97. Kick it again. Now picked up. <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> Washington got there first. That's John L. Smith, the deep, the special teams coordinator. Now, I watched him practice all this. This was an automatic. He's not supposed to run it until he gets the look. Now, let's see if Alabama had an overloaded look to the rugby. He's only got a one, two, three, four guys to the outside here. They go with it, and no one touches the end man on the line of scrimmage. You're running towards it, and no one blocks it. Arkansas got a little too cute and didn't execute it. Disaster. John L. Smith, former Michigan State head coach, former Louisville head coach, longtime associate of Bobby Petrino. Here's the handoff. It goes to Richardson, number three, and uh, Adrian Davis, number 18, makes the tackle. So the blocked punt, Lionel Washington. John L. Smith, take a look at this. Look, and, and he went right to the quarterback of the punt team and goes, why didn't you call that off? There was a man outside, or you should have taken him. He was very upset with his blocking back for not calling off the rugby punt. Julio Jones. Jeez, don't you get the feeling that you really couldn't go too wrong throwing the ball to him 10 or 12 times a game? Right. First down, Crimson Tide. Just pitch it to the outside. Now watch this gets cakes. Ten people, ten Arkansas players come over here and gang tackle Julio Jones on this play. And I don't think he goes down until the tenth guy hits him. I don't have enough numbers to go. Look at that. There are ten guys on that tackle. Wow. On first down, here's McElroy, play fake, pulls back, fires it short. And it's caught you know, by Preston Dial. You know who McElroy reminds me of? <laughs> Kyle Mason. The old well, point I guard. I gave him for Kentucky. Remember, Kyle okay. never looked like he was in a hurry. He just distributed the ball to all his good players. Right. Nothing looked fancy. You kind of never got wowed by the guy. Nothing stood out. He didn't do anything fancy with the ball. Just pass it to the open guy and just make the play. That's how McElroy just distributes the ball all around the field. Never wows you with any one throw. Here's the handoff to Richardson up the middle. Enjoyed Tracy's update on McElroy and, and uh, He's only made two B's in his entire academic career. He's taking one class right now. It's in sports management taught by Butch Henry and uh, the guest speaker the Mike. other night oh, was our producer, producer, Craig Silver. Right. And three uh, people sleeping in the class. <laughs> <laughs> <talking about her. laughs> third and five, the avuncular Craig Silver, by the way. Uh, third down and five. Mark Ingram is the running back. That's Mark Please Mays in motion. Play fake. McElroy under pressure. There he is. Finds Ingram. Touchdown, Alabama. Mark Kyle Macy. You got to hit the open shot. You give him the free throw, he hits the open shot. There it is. 
Set up by that man's block. Lionel Washington. Well, set up by a disaster in special teams also for, for Arkansas on that blocked punt. That was a disaster. That was the punt blocked by Lionel Washington. Here's Lee Tiffin on. Extra point, good. It all started with Washington's block punt. Ultimately recovered by Eric Anders. Oh, feeble attempt to block him there. And, and how about the touchdown? You have to get the open shot or make a free throw and you just throw it out there and that's as easy as it can get. That was very, very easy drive. You go Julio Jones, you distribute the ball and you put it to 28 to 7. Stallworth out. Hightower, big important. Dante Stallworth. Yes. Wrong well, team. It's all right. Wrong team. Dante Hightower. Injured knee in the first half, but uh, back on the sidelines. And Mark Ingram made the touchdown catch 14 yards from Greg McElroy. Tiffin will kick off for Alabama. Now leading by 21. <laughs> Grabbed at the goal line. Johnson all the way out. Good return. Now let's uh, revisit Lionel Washington's block of the rugby kick. Yeah, here he goes. Bottom defensive end comes out, not blocked at all by Jericho Nelson, number 31. Nelson makes the call to stay with it. Jericho Nelson, number 30. Now watch, John L. Smith is going, you should have called it off. We went over this, and if you're going to come out, you got to bump him. You just can't wave at him. That was a huge play. 52-yard kickoff return, and here's Mallet with time going deep. He's got a man open again. Is it picked off? It is not. It is. Yes. Boy, it's close. I don't know if that ball hit the ground or not. I think your first instinct is correct here. This was so late, so late by Ryan. You know, he loves his arm. He knows it's a strong arm. But he threw it way late. Almost has to have a stop on the route from right. Now let's see if this ball hits the ground or not. Oh yeah, it did. That's going to be an incomplete pass. That ball hit the ground. Ben Oldham is the replay official. And of course, I think you all know that in college football, every play is under review. Well, this one should be the stopped. play is under further review. Well, I don't know what Ben's going to do, but I know what I would do. I would reverse that call. Incomplete. Yes. yes. Well, to see how late that ball was thrown by Ryan. You know, he knows he's got a big arm. He believes in his arm, but just still, these fast receivers in the SEC for Arkansas outran it. Jarius Wright outran it. There's one look. Hard to tell there. Oh, yeah, the ball was still moving right there when he caught it. Now from the side. It's out. Right there, don't you think? Yep. I was already getting a hot dog. Sure <laughs> you were on your own those last two. Oh. Well, again, another mini break for Arkansas to stay in this football game. Now the conversation does continue. Yeah, now they got to find out where the ball was. They have to move it back and move the chains back and everything. We got a little. <clears throat> A little bit of a delay. Thomas Ritter and uh, that conversation continues. We've not had an indication that it was overturned, but I think that's what we're going to hear right now. After review, 
Video evidence shows that the ball came loose and hit the ground. Therefore, we have an incomplete pass. It's going to be second down and 10 at the 48-yard line. Second down. Did you see the lack of reaction by Nick? The guys in the booth had already told Nick yeah. it, it, it was going to be re, re, uh, overturned. And you know what I liked about that whole process is the timeliness of it. They didn't dawdle. Ben Oldham thought he had conclusive evidence. Right. Bingo. Didn't take him four minutes. And so Arkansas gets it back. Second down and 10. They haven't changed the down marker yet. Now they do. And here comes Ryan Mallett. Ryan Mallett, when he was living in Lincoln, Arkansas, used to park cars at Razorback Stadium so he and his dad could get in and watch the Hogs. Having a tough afternoon, 12 of 28 for 160, and the sun has broken through. Just when I talked about the timeliness. Well, you called it at Mississippi State. It was headed this way. <laughs> a veteran SEC announcer. You know exactly the, the patterns here. Yeah. Yep. There's Ryan Mallett's folks. They live in Texarkana. His dad is a middle school coach. And uh, for a while, they lived in Hooks, Texas. And that's where Ryan went to middle school himself. Home of Billy Sims. Our teammate. Yep. Second down and 10. Smith, big run, first down. That's a gain of 12. Well, a couple guesses this time. Corey Reamer and Rolando McClain both shoot the gap, and they shoot the wrong gap. See? 25 and 13 both in the backfield, and they both came the wrong angle, and that allowed Smith to get to the outside. First down at the 36-yard line. Mallet with a play action pass. Double coverage left oh, side geez. and a little behind the receiver Gotta Charles. Catch that though. <laughs> Second down and 10. They go deep. Right side and overthrown. Incomplete. Intended for Reggie Fish, number one. Yeah, it should have been Najarius Wright, though, number four. Because the slot guy broke open. And you know, you got to make a quick decision at quarterback that time. He chose the wrong guy and he actually throwed the ball through the ball to the covered player. Uh, another big third down play here. And I and I pretty much guess, even though we got, you know, it's a third quarter here. Petrino has two downs to pick this up. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes halfway on his third down play. Left side. Oh, man. Wow. Mm. Michael Smith. Now, Michael Smith's not the tallest player, but this is a gift. A gift first down, and the ball's thrown too high. Fourth and ten. Can't do it. That's an easy completion, and you'll get read the riot act for that one. Any of us would be. Arenas is back. Dylan breeding on to punt. And Arenas at the ten. See if they can stop it. No ho. Yes. At the one yard line. Inside the one. Now let's uh, bring you up to date on SEC action. Tough one for LSU today. They held off Mississippi State. They had to have a goal line stand to do so. And a big punt return from Chad Jones. 30 to 26. South Carolina on Thursday night as uh, Jevin Sneed had a 7 of 21 night. They won. South Carolina did over Ole Miss. How about that game? Uh, you mentioned it. I think LSU had a punt return for a touchdown. Right. An interception for a touchdown. Stopped them third and one and fourth and inches to win the football game. Nice. 
We've got LSU at Georgia next week and look forward to that one. From the uh, half yard line, if there is such a thing, officially the one. Boom. Great play by the quarterback and the guy who never had anything more than a B. He went hard count one B in his whole career, and he outsmarted the defense on that one. That made him feel as good as his touchdown passes today. Stole five yards. Good ball. Offside by contact. Nose guard. Five yard penalty. Still first half. Watch him go hard count. Watch his head. Oh, he got him. Now watch how happy he is. Yeah. <laughs> A left handed fist, and then boy, right now. Bang, bang. Ouch. Dum, dum, dum. McElroy's B, I find great irony in this. I know. His B was in leadership and management. I don't want to take that course. <laughs> Guys, all leadership. Here's uh, Ingram bouncing to the left side, and it'll be second down. Elton Ford, number nine, makes the tackle. See, look how big that five yards was right now, because you're looking at second and ten backed up. Now, from the five or six yard line, you can really call anything, because this is where we talked about it early. McElroy has earned the trust of, I think, of his coaching staff and Nick Saban. They'll let him throw down here, throw his way out of it. Second and five at the six, and he does have two wide receivers wide right. Out of this pistol formation, he's five yards back. They hand it off left side. Ooh, Ouch. Big hit. Wow. That's Wendell Davis, number 10, with the tackle. These always look big because the back stumbles when he gets hit. So he, gets, he lost his legs before Davis cleaned it up. Watch him trip just a bit and then gets cleaned up with a perfect technique tackle there. Third and three at the eight-yard line. Ingram, right side, squirts through, first down. Out to the 14. Well, everyone's getting familiar with this pistol formation. Chris Alt, uh, actually one of the people that Bobby Petrino said he learned a lot of football from, really started this trend out in Nevada with this pistol, and it's really spread now. The reason it's effective is you get the shotgun and you get the tailback being able to attack both sides because he's lined up in the middle of the formation. Gives you some eye formation, but shotgun also. And here's the traditional eye formation. The handoff goes to Ingram, and uh, maybe a one-yard gain. We're at 2.45 remaining in the third quarter. Mark Ingram was telling us yesterday that he, he just loved watching the SEC on television when he was in high school. He visited Wisconsin, his dad's alma mater, Michigan State, Arizona State, and he was a late, he never made an official visit down here. Uh, but they started recruiting him and he came down in the spring and uh, fell in love with the place. He doesn't say y'all yet. <laughs> and how about the fact as he stopped here on second down, he told us, Gary, that he thought football was his least favorite sport. I know. Loves golf. As a kid, he played that junior tour as a young uh, young golfer. He says he hasn't picked it up for a while. The golf clubs, I mean. You know, most of and they all count. I understand this. But most of Alabama's rush yards have been in the big plays. I mean, they haven't been able to do what they did last year, just kind of grind it out with those four, five, six yards at a crack. Third and nine. Screen pass. Got some room to rip, and that's Roy Upchurch for a first down. Jericho Nelson with the tackle. It's a gain of 13. Well, and Upchurch does that the best. They told us that the thing they love about Upchurch, who's been fighting off a few injuries, is that he's our best screen back and our best blitz linebacker back. You know, when they get those linebackers coming, he takes them on the best. Darius Hanks is on the field. He and Marquise Mays go wide right. That's Mays outside of Hanks. And Julio Jones is put left. McElroy, D 
deep right side. Man on man coverage. Oh, how about that? Hanks. This guy's coming on. Hanks is becoming. I'll tell you, here's Julio Jones down here. You got to wonder why he doesn't go to him because Julio Jones went right by the defender on this place from on Broadway. Watch it. Touchdown. Boom. That's a touchdown if you go to the bottom of the screen right here. But throw to the other side. And Hanks makes a nice play on it. He is an emerging star for this football team. Nelson was the defender. It's a gain of 32. And they test the middle, don't get much. Well, you know, if you block on one play, maybe you get rewarded on the next play. Remember the screen pass on third down? Hanks went downfield, did his job, and threw and cleaned the little yardage for the first down. Maybe Greg McElroy says, I saw that, I'm coming to you. Although to me, if, if eight has one-on-one, -on -one, <laughs> it's like, gee, kind of mismatch. Alexander's on the field now, number 82. Here's the blitz from the corner. One-on-one -on -one right side and overthrown. Flag. They did throw the flag. Franklin with the pressure on McElroy. Remember Ramon Broadway was beat on the last play by Julio Jones and he didn't throw to him? Right. Maybe the box said, called down and says, God, number 26 got killed on the play before. Let's go at him again. And they did. Here's Tom Ritter. Pass interference, number 26. Defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. That's a good, real good call by Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator. Broadway. Bad technique, he's arm bar, you can see it with his right arm, they're gonna call that. The whole way down, he rode the receiver. There's Jim McElwain right there. Guy waving his hand, now covered up by the, the graphic. Offensive coordinator. From Fresno State, yeah. as a matter of fact. And Montana. Missoula. Not much there on this one. And the clock winds down to zero at the end of the third. That's the end of three with the score, 28-7 Crimson Tide over the Razorbacks. We'll return to Bryant-Denny Stadium right after this word from your local station. Welcome back to the fourth quarter, Bryant-Denny Stadium right off the quadrangle and uh, you see the Denny Chimes, a famous tower here as a part of the campus of the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson and Alabama in the midst of a very long drive. Trent Richardson is going to be at running back as we begin the fourth quarter. 28 seven Crimson Tide. From the 25 they'll go in this pistol formation now. Here's McElroy, flips it out to Richardson. Oh boy. He's home. Wow. Holy cow. <laughs> I am reminded because we were told at halftime Leroy Jordan is here and he told some guys I, at halftime Emmett Smith. I, I I agree. He may be a little bigger than Emmett, but that stockiness, willing to take collisions, doesn't fall down easy. I I, I like that comparison. Alabama a year ago, 12 and 0, mm -hmm. lost their last two, Florida and Utah. Comparison then to now, well, what do you think? Last year they had one way to beat you down. I mean, they had that power and it was dependable every game. This year they have more ways to beat you, but maybe not quite as dependable. Third down and short. Quarterback draw. McElroy got it, first down. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm beginning to really really like to talk about Greg McElroy, what the coaches told us. McElwain, his coach, and Nick Saban, is he plays with no ego on the quarterback draw here. He doesn't demand the ball. He doesn't want to throw the ball down the field all the time. He manages the game. I mean, he's perfect. He's Matt Mock. That ah. was his quarterback at LSU when Nick won the national championship. 12th play of the drive. It's first down at the 13. And they'll run the draw. Here's Ingram. Good stop there. 
McElroy, as we've said, came out of South Lake Carroll. He played for Todd Dodge, who's now the head coach at North Texas. He signed, he agreed to go to Texas Tech. And you asked him yesterday, how did you wind up at Alabama? Oh, yeah, and he, he cut me off really quickly, and he goes, you know. And I said, yeah, well, I want to hear you say it. You know, and he goes, I Shula wanted Tebow, and when Tebow didn't sign, I was the afterthought. Well, it's worked out pretty good for both guys, I think, right? Yep, sure has. Second and nine at the 12. McElroy. Little shoving, incidental. Oh, no, 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 there is a flag. The one official did not throw it, and the guy who was a little farther away. Right. The side judge didn't call it. The back judge did. You know, I, I thought that was a good battle for the ball right there. You know, I mean, they had collision. you got to be kidding me. I know that one. <laughs> Pass the defense. Defense. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball be placed at the two yard line. First down. Let's see the collision here. Of course, the ball was in the air. And that's what it is. And that means Terrence Cody's in the backfield. Oh, yeah. There's the one thing ball. Well, I don't know. I thought that was pretty good coverage by Stewart that time. And there's the big guy. Will he get the ball? He hasn't got the ball yet. Not this year. Nope, not this time. Touchdown. He got some attention, didn't he? Oh, man. Wow. Wendell Davis and Cody with a collision. But it was irrelevant as Ingram scooted around the right side, and it's 34 to 7. That was, Gary, a 99-yard touchdown right. drive. Actually, 99 and a half, and big Cody made, I want to say he made a pile, but he kind of is a pile by himself. <laughs> Tiffin. <laughs> Terrence Cody. Nose tackle. Oh, my <laughs> Ouch! They had three penalties on the drive. The initial offsides to get them off the half yard line and two pass interferences. One was questionable. Dennis Johnson is deep. Lee Tiffin will kick off. Johnson will take this, gathers it in at the two-yard line. Tries to hurdle a man and is knocked down short of the 18. Let's go back. They downed that punt at the one-half right. yard line. And this is where you can get your quarterback. You know, Phil Simms used to do a great job of it all the time when he played. Stealing yards coming out of your own end zone right there. Yeah, I bet he's as proud of that play as anything he's done today. Looks like he's going to remain undefeated as a starter. Looks like a little hip pointer. I wonder yeah. if he got a hit on that quarterback draw. First down and 10. Mallet oh, drills it. Great throw and another drop. Hamilton dropped this one. Let's check in with uh, Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, two series ago, McElroy came off the field. He was pointing to that hip, stretching it, riding the bicycle. He went back in for that last series, came back out, and immediately again started stretching his back, that side of the hip, went back on the bicycle. They just taped him up, put some ice on it. No word on whether he'll go back in. I haven't seen Star Jackson take the ball, though, and start warming up, guys. Well, it was, uh, what, uh, last week that Star Jackson... Right did establish himself as the number two quarterback, so we might see him with a 35-7 lead. Here's the handoff to uh, Niall Davis. Flag is thrown. Davis forward for the first down if the play stands. Okay, Tim, Holy thank you. On the 71 offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Go second down. That's Wade Grayson. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I'm glad Tracy did that story. Because I was just thinking in my head, and I'm going to out myself here. I was going to, I wonder if we're going to put Star Jones in. 
And then I was, oh, it's Star Jackson. That's right. <laughs> You know, I'm proud of you for fessing up. And I looked and I go, I turned it over to Star Jacks. <laughs> I was thinking Star, oh, man. That I'm the been, one who That would have been embarrassing. That would have. <laughs> I had Dante Stallworth. I know. Been, you know. It is live television after all. <laughs> Seven, second down. Mallet. Whoa. Well, you know, it's not going to get any easier this year for the Arkansas Razorbacks. They have an approved football team, but they still have like the baton death march of college football here. At Alabama, at Florida, at Ole Miss. All right, that one might not be as tough as we thought. And at LSU, but that's about as tough as you can get. And then they also play Texas A&M in Texas at uh, Jerry's new stadium. Yeah, Jerry World. I bet they won't be selling excessive party passes to that one. No. <laughs> Third down. And Mallet might. Did he get injured on that last play? Let's see. No, maybe there's a clock issue here. We have operational problem with the play clock. Hmm. Operational problem. Would that mean like it's not working well? Is that operational problem? Well. There you go. 40, 39, 40, 39. Yeah, that's operational problem. Well, you know, I, I felt in the first half that Ar Arkansas dodged the bullet. Well, they, you know, they helped. You know, they couldn't dodge it all day. They're just making too many mistakes here. Alabama might not be as vintage as they were a year ago, but they're, they're pretty darn good. Back judge will keep the play clock on the field until they get this problem fixed. <laughs> Left side. Michael Smith. Fourth down. So we're going to see uh, Dylan Breeding again, the walk on from Hoover High School. Less than an hour from here, suburb of uh, Birmingham, and one of the traditional high school powers, not just in the state, but throughout the country. But he walked on at Arkansas. Javier Arenas at the 38 yard line. Short. That'll be a one hopper. Arenas. Whoa. Let me get out himself. of the way. Yeah. He wanted to get that on the first hop, and it just didn't happen. 53 yard punt. Nothing on the return. Long day for a large quarterback. Six foot seven inch Ryan Mallett. Seven of 21 in the first half. McElroy back on the field. We do not have Star Jackson. Replacing him, so uh, or Star Jones, either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you hey, that'll be that? Okay, you know, erase, erase. All right, first down and 10. Left side. This is Terry Grant. Gets outside and uh, is knocked out of bounds by Jerry Franklin, number 34. Well, Terry Grant has worked himself out of the doghouse for Nick Saban this year. He's um, volunteered to do anything necessary to help the team win, and uh, he's earned his spot in the rotation. It's a tough rotation, though. I mean, you got Ingram. Up Church and Richardson. That's a tough lineup to break. Into first down and ten. That's pretty. That is beautiful. In Tuscaloosa. First down, ten.
Terry Grant goes left. Well. And don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. Well, if I'm Alabama, I mean, I'm third ranked. You know, I mean, if you look ahead of you, Florida obviously controls their own destiny, but you get to play Florida. Texas, I think, second controls their own destiny. But if I'm Nick coming through this game, I really only have two concerns. I lost the playmaker on defense, it looks like, and my offensive line doesn't look like they can knock people off the line of scrimmage like they did last year. Second down. They go left. Flag is thrown on the far side. Well, Jim McElwain is uh, the second year offensive coordinator at Alabama. Bobby Petrino, second year as the head coach at Arkansas. They go back to high school. On your left, McElwain, who went to. You know, what's funny is one guy said he lit him up for 33, and the other guy said, no, no, it was only 32. <laughs> <laughs> and then McElwain reminded us, and I'm sure he wants this on the air, that he did score the last five points in overtime to give them a the jump pass. Yeah. Terry Grant all the way to the 45 yard line. Screen pass to McElwain. Could have been rough on the passer after the play, too. Watch McEl excuse me, watch Craig McElroy. Jump pass. And then he gets shoved out. Yeah, that's definitely roughing the passer. I'm surprised that that one wasn't called. That's his version of it. Nice run on the back end of it. And a first down 10. Here's the pistol again. They come right with the handoff. Terry Grant. 9.33 left in this one. Yep. That's exactly what he did with Hughes. And he's a great one. On second down. McElroy. That's uh, Alexander who starts in motion. Now comes back. Work on the clock and keep it down. It's Terry Grant inside the 40 to the 39 yard line. You know, I think uh, Nick Saban here, and, and you know, we, we got to say, I think he's showing his team that, yeah, I had Terry in the doghouse last year, but I've let him out and I'm feeding him the ball. That goes through that whole team is listen, I'm rough, I'm tough, and I've got my way of doing things. But you know, I can forgive some guys and you can earn your way back in here. So subtly he's given his team a message long term that uh, I understand and I'll feed you the ball. If you work hard, I'll get you back in the game plan. Two receivers wide left on third down. It'll be fourth down. Adrian Davis, number 18, makes the tackle. Uh, Greg McElroy was telling us yesterday his uh, his mom went to Florida State, I believe. Right. He had an uncle that went to Florida. He said, despite that, I don't like either school. <laughs> My dad played football at Hawaii, and I'd forgotten this. I said, what does your dad do? He said, he's vice president of sales for the Dallas Cowboys. That's right. So uh, he's been busy with the opening of Jerry World. And this is like a mini cowboy reunion here. It's fourth down. We've got Chuck Howley, Cliff Harris, and Leroy Jordan all here in the uh, stadium today. This is a nice one and goes through the end zone. That will be a touchback and it'll come out to the 20 yard line. PJ Fitzgerald, 720 to go. Alabama's going to go to 4 0, 1 0 in the conference. Razorbacks with a tough road schedule still in front of them are going to go to one and two. Studying sports management for his master's degree. First down and ten. Blitz. Malik. Off his back foot. And incomplete. Well. Alabama's going to go 4-0. Oh. How about right. controlling your own destiny? Well, here's the way I got it. I think the number one seed in the country right now is the SEC champion if they're undefeated. That means Florida, Alabama, or LSU, if they run the table go undefeated, I think they're number one. Oop, they're already destiny is gone. But Texas is sitting in the number two spot. California loses Whoops. today. So look at Penn State and Michigan have moved themselves up the ladder. 
Mallet. Intercepted. Picked off by Justin Woodall, number 27. And Alabama has going to have a first down at the 14-yard line. Well, Mark Bear, excuse me, I'm sorry, inside Jarius Wright was the receiver. You could see the defender Johnson was there, and number 27 Woodall ends up with it. You know, there's just, it's hard to believe. I think the start of this game, you know, when that long pass was hit, I mean, at 14 to 7, you could really see the Arkansas players said, you know, we got a chance in this game. That pass down the sideline, I think they said, we ain't going to win this game. Right. That's the first interception in the last 105 for Ryan Mallett. Uh, day to forget for Mallett and his teammates. Yeah, they, they have a long way to go. They really do. Woodall with his first interception of the season. And McElroy apparently is going to finish this one out. It's 7.02 to go. That one goes nowhere. Jake Beckett, Debbie Thomas's nephew. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a long season. I'm, I'm still saying that I think this year is, might be the year that everybody has a loss. Hmm. Here's the handoff. You know, one of the one of the teams that just, as we're watching this play out, it, it really is an enigma to me. How would you like to figure out Florida State if you were a Seminole fan? I mean, what are they? Huh. I mean, they almost lose to Jacksonville State. Right. They blow away BYU and they come home and get beat by South Florida. And I'll bet you there's not a player on South Florida that got an offer from Florida State. And a South Florida playing without their stellar quarterback. Quarterback, that's right. Amazing. Third down. And 14. 5.38 to go. Hand off. It's going to be fourth down. And you know who walks up into that fifth slot right behind Michigan and Penn State? Cincinnati. You know, I mean, that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, that team who seems to be able to win and move the ball is going to get a mention here. And it would appear now that uh, they're going to forego SU. SU yes. the uh, field goal. Well, they don't want to get their quarterback hit here, I don't think. It might not be very fancy. Nope. Well, yep. Yep. Grant, the ball will go over on downs. See, that you really don't have much to do there. If you kick a field goal, it looks like you're rubbing it in. Sure. You know, so. I thought that was uh, the right call. Well, what, is, what does Arkansas have to do as a team? Relax and play. I watch the practice. They have ways to move the ball. They have a quarterback who can throw the ball. You know, it looks like Tyler Wilson's going to come in for Ryan Mallett here to finish off this game. But before he gets to take a snap, time has been called. It will be Tyler Wilson, the quarterback. The freshman from Greenwood, Arkansas, in the quarterback, Ryan Mallett, through for the day. Tough one. Tyler Wilson um, received the medical redshirt last year, even though he played against Alabama. He got hurt later. Yeah, he had mononucleosis later, and they let him have another year, so he's still four years of eligibility. Here's a handoff to uh, Broderick Green, number yeah. 29. You know what I was saying about learn about Arkansas is, you know, you watch practice, they, they got talent. Mm -hmm. This big stage on the road, I mean, they're not used to it. Yet. You know, I just don't, I just, they were out of sync this whole football game. That is not, I don't think, typical of how they can play football. Now, give some credit to Alabama, because they forced things, but I, I still think there was too many unforced errors. On both sides of the ball? On both sides of the ball, and special teams, three sides of the ball. Oh, oh Wilson. Man. Wilson got popped. The catch is made by Joe Adams, number three. And that's a surprise to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm shocked by that. You know, Georgia plays Arizona State tonight and LSU next week. That's yep. two big games for Georgia coming up. It's green out of the backfield. Now, you said you got a scenario in the well, summer when, yeah it was a it was a half of a tweak against the ncaa for or the bcs for not changing the rule that you can't play for the national championship 
unless you win unless you win your conference. Right. So if that's the rule, the only way you can have that happen is LSU has to beat Florida, lose to Alabama, Alabama goes undefeated, and then come back. And the only one loss teams are Florida and LSU, but everybody else has to have losses. The only scenario I see that happen is Texas is going to have to go into double. Yeah. I don't think it's likely. Texas got too many good football players and not enough competition. Second and ten. Tyler Wilson. Deep left side. Childs is down there. It's incomplete. Well, Alabama's got to go to Kentucky their next game and then at Ole Miss they get South Carolina at home. Yeah it'd be nice if you were um, Kentucky to have season tickets you get Florida and Alabama back to back. If you're a player for Kentucky you might want to rather do that in basketball season rather than football season. Look at Terrence Cody. Speaking of basketball. Yeah. Is it Nets Hightower right? Yeah it sure is. Yeah. Cody and in fourth played high school basketball at uh, 400 some pounds. Third down. Uh, oh goodness. On fourth down Arkansas will go for it. Left side and the ball will go over on downs. Got by Kobe Hamilton. Well. They have to get some, I think, to run it against the powerhouses. They need some more help from their receivers, but they got to get Deontay Thompson healthy. They've got to have, you know, Rainey and Demps emerge a little bit more. So the basic answer, I'm going to say, Tim, no. I think they need more help. I don't think he can do it all by himself. Star Jackson is on the field, a quarterback. There he is. Redshirt freshman from Lake Worth, Florida, 6'3", 206 pounder. Got to play quite extensively last week against uh, North Texas and that convincing win. McElroy for the day 17 of 24 nine yards short of 300 three touchdowns including an 80 yarder and a 52 yarder and no interceptions. You know this uh, Alabama team. You know, was we asked, uh, was it Orlando? Was it a McLean that asked? I said, what was it like? Was it SEC championship loss tougher or the Utah loss tougher? He says, you know, the SEC championship loss was crushing because we played well and we, you know, they they grabbed it from us. They got the win. He said the Utah loss was embarrassing. You know, I mean, we we just didn't show up. But that SEC loss, that was a crusher. Well, that was one versus two in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, and it was Tebow putting his team on his back in the fourth quarter and leading to a victory. Well, Dante Hightower, knee injury. Now, number 30, helmet right to his, I guess it was his left knee there, goes off, and the most personal player on that team that could do the most things in Saban's defense is going to be, you know, for Nick to even say it's a knee injury, you know it's a serious one because he doesn't give out a lot of information. 14 seconds remaining. Nick Saban. Bobby Petrino. And a 35-7 victory for the Crimson Tide coming in today ranked third. We'll return to Bryant Denny right after this message. 